Hello, dear students. Today we are going to look at the story, The Beggar and the Baker, written by Paolo Coelho. I'm sure we are all familiar with this name, Paolo Coelho. And I'm very sure that most of you must have read his work, The Alchemist, which is very motivational in nature. If you desire truly for something, the whole universe conspires to bring you that thing. That is the message that Alchemist brings. Now, when we look at Paolo Coelho, he had a miserable childhood. And then his experiences have led him to such a philosophy that is stated in The Alchemist. So we'll look at Paolo, Paolo Coelho first and then move into the story. Paulo Coelho is a Brazilian lyricist and a writer. We know him better as a novelist, but he's also a songwriter and a lyricist. He was raised in Rio de Janeiro and he rebelled against the conventions of his Roman Catholic upbringing. And as a result, he was temporarily committed to a psychiatric hospital by his parents. He dropped out of law school in 1970 and traveled through South America, Mexico, North Africa, and Europe. Two years later, in 1972, he returned home and began writing pop and rock music lyrics. In 1974, he was briefly imprisoned for allegedly subversive activities against the Brazilian government. He then turned into writing. So his major works include The Alchemist, The Valkyries, By the River Piedra, I Sat Down and Wept, The Fifth Mountain, The Pilgrimage, Eleven Minutes, The Witch of Portobello, Aleph, and many other. We shall move directly into the story. This is a very small story which has some five or six sentences. We will look at the details of the story later, but we'll read the story first. The beggar and the baker. A baker wanted to know his, wanted to get to know a great guru in his town a little better. So he invited him to dinner. The day before, the guru went to the bakery disguised as a beggar picked a bread roll off the display and began to eat it. The baker saw this and tossed him out into the street. The following day, the guru and a disciple went to the baker's house and were treated to a splendid banquet. In the middle of the meal, the disciple asked, how does one tell a good man from a bad man? Just look at this baker. He is capable of spending 10 gold pieces on a banquet because I'm famous, but is incapable of giving a piece of bread to feed a hungry beggar. So as we see, this is the story. It's a very small story. We have three characters in the story, the baker, the guru, and the disciple. So as we see, the baker invites the guru for a dinner because he wants to, it is said that he wants to know the guru a little better. And the main reason is that he is a great guru. He is well known in that town and the baker wants to show off. So that's why he invites the, invites the guru for the dinner. So guru tests him back. If the baker wanted to know the guru a little better, the guru even more wanted to know the baker a little better. So he disguised as a beggar. He, he, uh, disguised, Vesha Marganwarin, he disguised as a beggar. He picked a bread from the display and started to eat. And the baker's natural response was that he was so irritated at the beggar and he throws him out into the street. He has no mercy, no kindness for the beggar. And the next day, when the guru is invited to the baker's place, the guru goes along with the disciple and they are given a splendid banquet. So it must have been truly a great dinner that the guru would have uh, had. And while having the meal, the disciple asks, 
how can we differentiate or how do we understand whether a person is good or bad? So the Guru replies that the baker himself is an example for that. He says that if he was good in heart, he would have given the bread to a hungry beggar. But he is not a good man and he is a bad man because he is capable of spending so much of money. He is capable of spending lavishly on a banquet for a famous guru. But he is not able to give or he is not able to feed a hungry beggar. So this is a very small story with a moral lesson. Now, how do we place the story into literature? We call such stories parables. So a parable is a didactic story, meaning a parable has a moral lesson always. So it's a, it's a, a moral story in prose or verse, and it illustrates one or more instructive lessons or principles. So the basic function of a parable is to give a moral lesson. So here, if we look at this story, we understand that the story gives a great lesson as to how you can differentiate between a good man and a bad man. It also tells you about the importance of sharing. It also tells you about the importance of giving to the needy. So a parable differs from a fable in that fables always have animals or plants or inanimate uh, objects as characters. But parables usually have human characters. So in this story also, we don't see uh, an inanimate object becoming a character, but here we have three human characters playing the role in the story. We have the guru, we have the baker, we also have the uh, disciple. Now parables often illustrate a universal truth. So parables are not limited to a particular place or time, but they usually give a universal truth. They usually tell you about something which is not limited by time or space. So here the universal truth is the importance of giving, importance of sharing. Also, a parable sketches a setting, describes an action and shows the result. So here we have a setting which is, uh, we don't know where exactly the story is happening, but then we know that this in this particular town, the baker is somewhat rich and the guru is also famous. So we have a setting here. There is an action. We have the guru disguising as the beggar, the baker inviting the guru for the dinner, the, gu the guru and the disciple coming for the dinner. We have an action happening. And there is also a result. We have the guru giving us a moral, moral lesson with just that one sentence. So we have a result. We have a moral lesson from the story. Parables often involve a character who faces a moral dilemma or one who makes a bad decision and then suffers the unintended consequences. So here also we have a character, the, the baker, who faces a moral dilemma, who faces a moral difficulty. He makes a bad decision. He does something which is bad. He throws out the beggar into the street. He doesn't feed the beggar, but instead uh, spends lavishly on the guru. So he makes a bad decision and he suffers. He has to face the consequences from the guru. Now, although the meaning of the parable is not explicitly stated, it is not intended to be hidden or secret, but to be quite straightforward and obvious. So here also we see that in this story, it is not a hidden moral that the guru is giving, but it's a straightforward lesson. It's a straightforward um, a principle that he proposes that you need to feed the hungry. You need to be concerned about the people who are in need around you. Now, there is a presence of a subtext suggesting how a person should behave or what he should believe. So here the guru is very clearly stating what is expected of a good man and what is what is not expected of a good man. So um, he clearly states that a person, a good man is expected to, you know, be concerned about the needy. He's expected to be kind and merciful to the people around him. And he definitely implies the baker when he states this. Parables also express an abstract argument by means of a by means of using a concrete narrative, which is easily understood. Now, uh, one great teacher who used parables a lot in 
his teachings was Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus Christ, uh, when he, when he, whenever he used a parable, he was giving a great moral lesson, which would not be understood by the common people otherwise. It's easy for a common man to relate to a story rather than uh, listening to certain philosophies. So parables usually do that. They give you an abstract argument. They give you an abstract idea through a concrete narrative. Here also we have a concrete narrative. Here also we have a concrete story of the baker and the beggar. And the moral of the story is the abstract argument that the parable presents. And pa Paulo Coelho himself has categorized this kind of story as spiritual stories. He calls it a spiritual story. So we can, we can uh, bring this particular story under the classification of a parable. Let's move into the story. We have three major characters. The baker, who is really inquisitive. We see his curiousness. He is curious to know the guru better. He is curious to know what kind of attitude the guru has. And he is greatly influenced by the idea of fame. That is why he is very particular that this guru is famous. That's why in the first sentence itself, it is stated that he wanted to know the great guru in his town. So he is greatly influenced by the idea of fame. He is ready to do anything, even spend money in order to become famous. He is desirous of fame. And we don't see a humanitarian uh, individual in the baker. He has no kindness. He has no mercy towards the beggar. So he is not humanitarian. The second character is the guru. The guru, as we have already said, is a great guru. He is famous in that particular township. And he disguises as the beggar in order to know the baker's personality better. Sorry, I have, I have mis, mis, uh, written it as beggar's personality, but this baker's personality. The guru disguises to know the baker's personality better. We also have the third character who is the disciple. The disciple is not sure whether um, he is, uh, we, we are not sure whether uh, the disciple is aware of the uh, disguise that the guru has put up. But something in him makes him ask that question. Maybe he, he would have known that the, the guru has uh, disguised as a beggar and the experiences the guru has had at uh, the baker's bakery. Or he might not have known any of that. But he poses the question, which leads to the sharp reply from the guru. So these are the three characters in the story. Now, moving on, we have certain themes uh, in the story. The first theme is that of uh, giving or sharing. The parable gives the moral lesson of sharing one's wealth with the needy. And the guru here criticizes the baker for not being able to share the food with the beggar. The second theme is a contrast between good and bad. So the one question that is asked in the story is asked by the disciple. And it is, how does one tell a good man from a bad man? And in reply, the guru states that we find goodness uh, coming from the heart. Okay, goodness usually always comes from the heart and not in external pretenses. See, if the baker had known that it was the guru who was disguised as a beggar, he would have definitely given food to him. Instead, the baker abused the beggar, thinking that he does not belong to his social status and hence humiliates him. The third theme that we can find in the story is that the story criticizes the attitude of doing charity for fame. The baker is not a miser. He is not he is not a, 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 a stingy man. Instead, he spends lavishly on a well-known person in the land, the guru. So definitely the baker must have expected fame in treating a man like the guru. Fourth one is the theme of understanding. Both from the guru's perspective and also from the baker's perspective. The story begins by stating that the baker wanted to know the guru better. 
At the same time, the Guru also makes an attempt to understand the true nature of the baker. That is why he disguises as a beggar and goes to his shop. And the last one is the universal nature of the story. We already mentioned this when we talked about the parable. The story states a universal truth. We find that the story is not placed in any particular space or time. We don't know when the story happened or we don't know where the story happened, whether it is in Paulo Coelho's own land, Brazil or in India. We don't know where this actually happened. There is no mention of a place or a time. It suggests that this nature of the baker is commonly seen in most of the people. And in the modern times, it might be in the form of people who perform charitable acts and post it on social media and others for fame. Hence, the story has a universal nature. So to, in today's class, we talked about the story, The Beggar and the Baker by Paolo Coelho. We looked at the story as a parable. We also talked about the three main characters in the story. We also discussed certain themes that we find in the story. I hope the class was clear. Thank you.